Dude, I finally found a hyaluronic acid that doesn't dry out skin. And one that works under sunscreen. We kind of have to back up. Today we're going to talk about the skin science, you little science nerds. And we are going to discuss hyaluronic acid and specifically why it can dehydrate some people. Now, we've actually done a video on this. I want to say it was like almost a year ago, like 10 months to a year ago, talking about hyaluronic acid in skincare and yes, why it can dehydrate some people. Even James Walsh, who you know I love, he stopped using hyaluronic acid uh, because he found that it dried out his skin. And you know, it can be kind of a finicky molecule. And if you use it wrong, you know, it can have the potential to dry some people out, especially in winter. In addition, you know, the SPF is your BFF and some hyaluronic acid products can actually create problems for sunscreen in the way that you apply it to the skin if you don't give it enough time. Um, hyaluronic acid is a humectant, meaning it holds onto water and moisture. And sometimes it actually like tears your sunscreen apart kind of from the inside layer out, uh, especially if you don't give it time to dry in between. But I have found ones that work under sunscreen. We're working with Isentree on this video to discuss that, to discuss the science of hyaluronic acid, why some can dry you out. And again, I started using this, gosh, it was like right as quarantine started, I want to say. Um, I started using this for glass skin, and I had used other hyaluronic acid products before. I still like them, uh, but some of them can dry out your skin. And then let's talk about that, because if you're using a hyaluronic acid serum, you probably want the plumpness, the moisture, the skin texture, beneficial abilities that this molecule supposedly has. But if you use it incorrectly, it could actually make things such as dryness or skin irritation worse. Hyaluronic acid sounds scary, but it's not an exfoliating acid like your AHAs or BHAs. Um, it's actually made by our bodies in our joints and it's largely in our skin. And it usually hangs out in the dermis of our skin. We have super awesome cells called fibroblasts that are responsible for doing a lot in our skin and in our bodies. And one of the functions of this fibroblast is to create hyaluronic acid. Now, when our body creates hyaluronic acid, it's already bound to water. Remember, hyaluronic acid is a humectant, meaning it kind of attracts and holds onto water. And when it's in the body, it's already hydrated. Life is good. But if we're trying to add more of it to the skin, again, applying it to the epidermis or the top of our skin, hoping that it penetrates deep, it's going to grab onto water. That's why in my previous video I said you have to use hyaluronic acid along with a moisturizer just so that it doesn't dry the skin out. Because as a humectant, it's going to grab onto moisture. But where is it getting that moisture from? If you're applying it to your skin and you live in a dry, you know, dehydrated climate like the desert, your skin is going to have more moisture than the ambient atmosphere. Meaning that this hyaluronic acid that's sitting on the epidermis could have the potential of taking moisture out of the deeper layers of your skin and actually making things like dehydration worse. But if you live in a humid climate or a tropical climate, you know, where there is moisture and humidity in the air, the hyaluronic acid can bind to that. And, you know, we've actually done videos where I took a barometer onto a plane. I basically tested the humidity levels on an airplane. I've actually shared videos about all of these things in the past too. But on the airplane, I tested that out and saw what it did to my skin. And of course, if you live in that kind of a climate, you don't want to use HA. So let's say that you want the toning, plumping, hydrating benefits of hyaluronic acid, but you don't want to have to carry a barometer around with you and test the atmosphere every day. And you don't want to have to apply a moisturizer over the top of your serum, you know, for fear that it's going to dry you out. What are you supposed to do? Um, I blame Shenny for this one, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I blame the glass skin trend for this one. And we'll actually start here because this is what I started using first. I was on a quest for glass skin in early 2020 and I started using this from Isentree. It's the hyaluronic acid water essence and this combines hyaluronic acid with water but it's also multi-molecular weight. You see hyaluronic acid comes in different weights. I like to think of them as cookies, right? You can have the little tiny crunchy cookies, you could have the big cookies, you could have a cookie as big as your head and obviously these cookies are in many different sizes even if they're made of the exact same ingredients like flour and water and sugar and vegan eggs. But depending on how big these molecules are depends on how deep they can penetrate into the skin. And again, the hyaluronic acid in our body naturally hangs out in the dermis. A lot of what you apply goes on the epidermis and we're trying to get it down in there, which is pretty hard unless you're doing injections or fillers because again, the skin is a barrier. It is literally a barrier meant to keep things out. But things such as serums are a little bit more liquidy. They can kind of coat the pore and the follicle. And I found that when using this for my glass skin routine, it's a great hyaluronic acid that gives my skin plumpness, but it doesn't dry it 
out. And this one has eight different forms of hyaluronic acid, so eight different molecular weights, meaning that some of the bigger ones, those bigger cookies, are going to sit on the outside of the skin, and the smaller ones are going to have a chance to penetrate in deeper. So this is what I started with from Isentree, and this is also really confusing. There is Isentree, and then there is Isenfree. Isentree, think of like a tree in the backyard. It is cruelty-free. All of the products that I use from them are vegan. There's another brand called Isenfree that is not cruelty free. Um, and that was really confusing to me for a hot minute. I thought they were the exact same brand, but they are not. They are different. And again, because of the cruelty free status, I do not recommend Isn't Free because they are not cruelty free. And I recommend Isn't Tree because Isn't Tree is a tree I want to sit under and, you know, enjoy the skincare benefits of. <laughs> It's the little things like this, the little mind games I have to play with myself um, in order to remember and retain things. If you didn't know, now you know. This was the first product from them I ever tried, and then this is all Shenny's fault. Shenny is a doctor from Prague, she's part of the beautiful butterfly family, and she got me hooked on quite a few different K-beauty skincare products, and she said, Cassandra, you have to try the green tea fresh toner. And I was like, okay, what's the deal with this? And then I put it on my skin and I was like, oh, now I get it. This is actually a really hydrating toner. It is a toner and not just an essence. It is very, very liquidy and it almost comes off this, I don't know, this tea color, um, almost like a little bit of brown and then it just soaks right into the skin. And this does have a touch of hyaluronic acid in there, uh, but because the main ingredients in this product are water and this green tea, it's very hydrating and soothing on the skin. It's got Camilla Sensus Leaf Extract as a first ingredient, which is the green tea. It's got ginkgo, it has root extracts, it has allantoin, which is very soothing to the skin, and it has that sodium hyaluronate, and it has hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid. For somebody who is worried about dry skin, if you have dry skin in the winter, if you have eczema, or your skin is a little bit frustrated, this would probably be a best bet for a toner. You know, toners are really just watered down serums, especially if they have things like regular exfoliating acids in them, and they are not always an essential part of a routine. Uh, toners are meant to balance the pH of your skin, but with the acids in some of them, especially if you're trying to fight acne, they can be like an extra exfoliation step and can lead to over exfoliation. Again, I do love a lot of acne fighting toners, um, but you do have to kind of be careful about the different products that are in your routine and how they work together. This for someone who has more sensitive skin or dry skin, or if you want to try something like hyaluronic acid without the fear of having dry skin, is what I would recommend. And again, that brings us to some of the problems with traditional hyaluronic acid and the fact that yes, it can dehydrate the skin. Again, in my previous video, I distinctly remember saying that you need to use hyaluronic acid alongside a moisturizer, because the hyaluronic acid goes on first, and so that it doesn't take water and moisture from your skin, but it actually uses, you know, what's external, you have to put a moisturizer on top to make sure that it has water to take that from. But I said all of that before I had ever been introduced to these. So again, these are from Isentree. This is my favorite one, the sunscreen, and we'll talk about that, because yes, your hyaluronic acid Acid can destroy your sunscreen. But we'll first start with a moist cream. If you are looking for a moisturizer that is truly both moisturizing and hydrating, this is it. It's got five different types of hyaluronic acid. This is kind of like a gentle high five for your face. You know how you high five someone if things are going well and you guys like did something great together? That's what this is for your face, only it doesn't hurt. <laughs> the texture of this is almost bouncy. Like if you could put a wet trampoline into a product, this would be it. I know that's like a really weird analogy, but like that's how I describe it. It is like a moist trampoline. <laughs> and again, there are other moisturizers out there with hyaluronic acid. The one that I used to always use was from The Ordinary. They're natural moisturizing factors, but that one's a little bit more cloudy. It's more like cottage cheese. And that one I used for a while, but again, it is not the thickest of moisturizers. And some people have complained that that one, even though it's inexpensive, doesn't feel like you're actually locking moisture into your skin. And again, I love that one, but I do understand that criticism. But this one, it goes on and you can actually feel it kind of giving that suppleness to the face. Again, this one has five different types of hyaluronic acid, and when we do look at the ingredients, it starts off with water. We have water, glycerin, hydrogenated polydecane, caprylic triglyceride, shea butter, different oils such as safflower, we have artichoke, and then we have those five different types of hyaluronic acid, which includes the salt form of hyaluronic acid, or the little sister of hyaluronic acid, which is sodium hyaluronate, or sodium hyaluronate, depending on how you pronounce it. If you're looking for a moisturizer that does not dry you out, that you can use over other serums or just on its own, this is it. But we 
we do have to talk about in general the fear of using hyaluronic acid products underneath a sunscreen. Remember that SPF is your BFF. It is the most important part of a routine because it prevents sun damage, it prevents skin cancer, it prevents some of the aging fine lines and wrinkles that can happen from sun exposure. But hyaluronic acid is a humectant. It holds onto water. And the way that sunscreen has to work, it has to create kind of like a film or a barrier on the skin. It has to create this even layer, kind of sit on top of the skin. It needs to disperse and, you know, kind of create that sun shield for you. If hyaluronic acid is going in and grabbing onto moisture that's in that sunscreen, it's kind of tearing the sunscreen apart from the inside out. And this can be a real problem, especially if you notice that your sunscreen gets kind of pilly and thick if you apply it over a hyaluronic acid serum or any hyaluronic acid serum, um, then you're using the wrong hyaluronic acid serum. And as a swap, again, I do recommend this one. But that right there is a telltale sign that your hyaluronic acid is not working for you. And the best thing you can do is apply a moisturizer in between. But what if you're trying to be a more skin minimalist? What if you're trying to listen to your derm daddy, Dr. Angelo, and skincare intentionally, and you're trying to pare down your products? That's when I would recommend this. This is the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. It has eight different types of hyaluronic acid, and it is a sunscreen. This is formulated so that the hyaluronic acid actually goes into the skin, hydrates, keeps skin supple and plump, but the sunscreen doesn't get destroyed in the process. It actually creates this film on the skin nicely, protecting you from the sun. This is an SPF 50. And a fun thing, you know, about Korean regulation for skincare, did you know that it wasn't until 2008 that Korea actually had this governmental certifying of cosmetics and the listing of ingredients on labels? That was only 2008. And that's actually how Isntree Tree started. In 2008, when that happened, a guy named Jin Woo Kim started to post online and kind of do what we're doing, spread skin education, tell people how to read their ingredient labels and what these words meant and how to know what's right for their skin. And about a year after that, in 2009, he was like, wow, a lot of people are enjoying this blog. I'm going to create a skincare line. And that's actually how Isntree Tree was created. And speaking of ingredients, this one not only has those eight different forms of hyaluronic acid, but it also has niacinamide. Um, and that's kind of what I love about some of these sunscreens is that they do provide sun safety along with ingredients that you would actually find in normal cosmetics. They're not overly greasy on the skin. This one does go on lightweight, but this is super glowy. This is probably the glowiest sunscreen that I have ever used. Again, it's not glass skin. It's definitely more hydrating and absorbent than that. But when you put this on, it literally looks like you sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to your face. <laughs> now, this is what's considered an organic sunscreen or a chemical sunscreen, meaning that it is based on carbon. Korea does have access to much more advanced sun filters than we do here in the United States, just because of the different testing and the way the FDA in Korea works versus the FDA here. However, there are retailers that you can use to get these shipped from overseas or isn't is available on Amazon. So if you have access to Amazon, you can purchase from there. And as you can see, it literally looks like twinkle, twinkle, a little star was written across my cheeks. This is a super, super glowy sunscreen. And if you don't want the glow, this might not be for you. Um, but if you're dry, if you're combination or if you're oily, but don't want to look greasy and just want to look dewy, then this is it. Because yes, there is a difference between like the heavy grease of acne oily prone skin, which trust me, I know all too well, and actually having more of a dewy glow to the skin that kind of looks like it's just moisture from the inside out. And in the case of hyaluronic acid, it technically is. This also has skin soothing ingredients like ceramides in it. It's specifically ceramide NP. They also have centella asiatica, they have fig, they have olive, and all of this works together to be, it's almost like I would call it a glowy moisturizer with hyaluronic acid that is a sunscreen at SPF 50 as well. And again, they were able to create this so that you have SPF 50 PA++++++++++ and the hyaluronic acid doesn't degrade the sun protective abilities. I'm trying to think if there are other products that I've tried that you don't need to follow up with a moisturizer and dude I can't come up with any off the top of my head. Right as quarantine was starting, when I first started trying this one, this is my second bottle of it, and I love it to pieces. And it is the first hyaluronic acid that if I wanted to, I could just use this as a serum all on its own and walk out and enjoy my day and not have it dehydrate my skin by the end of it. If you're a little bit nervous of trying hyaluronic acid or you're trying to add a toner to your routine or do less exfoliation, then I would recommend this, the green tea one that Shenny got me hooked on. And if you are looking for a moisturizer with hyaluronic acid that gives 
the skin a little bit more bounce, this would be the way to go. It's a little bit more plumping than other moisturizers. Now, again, you could use this over the top of the moisturizer, or because this has hyaluronic acid, you could use this all on its own. Um, as of right now, I think this is my favorite Korean sunscreen based on safety, efficacy, it's OTC tested, etc. And if you're looking for a sunscreen that does not give a white cast that makes you look glowing, again, you have to love the glow and love the dew, this is going to be it. If you have any other questions about hyaluronic acid, we do have that other video that we filmed on it. I don't even have to tell you where to click. You know the drill by now. And if you haven't seen it, you really should because it talks a little bit more about the different types of hyaluronic acid, the different sizes of those cookies, and what it means for your skin. All of the links are listed below. Again, if you want to get something from Korea versus from Amazon, they are there for you. And I want you to always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.